Better than his actual words, and I think that's why we love what he does. Big night too for young Lenny Hayes. Yeah, I can remember um, his first game. Lenny Hayes tries to keep. He was cleaned up pretty solidly by Glenn Archer on the wing. His attitude was, we'll sort of bring it on, and uh, that's that's what I like, and that's the way I play, and uh, I think he, he earned respect straight away. Oh, he's got the rock star name. It's the rock star finish. Lenny Hayes to me is has been my role model. I could tell from his first year that he played. At St Kilda, he was a, a born leader. Be one of the tough, toughest opponents you'd ever play on as well. He's probably the best, one of the best tacklers the game's ever seen. Ferocious stuff, Lenny Hayes. Because he's so hard and tough, I think he's the class and the skill that he has probably gets overlooked. He's the perfect midfielder in today's game. Lenny Hayes, you star! He cares a lot for this club. He cares a lot about his footy and he cares a lot about his teammates. True heart and soul of the St Kilda Footy Club. And they all go to Lenny. He, he's an icon of St Kilda. He's the heart and soul of the place, and um, I, you know, I can't speak highly enough of, uh, of Lenny as a bloke and as, uh, as a player. It's a night to revel in all that's good about football on the 360 agenda. Another enduringly endearing figure announces the end. Lenny Hayes will join us on the day he formalised his retirement. On Players' Night, Drew Petrie returns to join Bob Murphy. Two winners from the weekend with so much to discuss. And one of the great magpies stops by to give away some footies as we reminisce about a marvel. I'm Jared Waitley, here's Mark Robinson. This Tuesday night, it's footy from all angles. Hello, Robo. Hello, Jared. It's, it's a great day for the Of Lee course, Hayes. it's not a sad day. Nope. It's not a sad day at all. It's a great day. Because we get to talk about... It's like when Jonathan Brown went down. Yep. We sat here and spoke about someone for ten minutes. And imagine doing someone in life doing that for you or me. I mean, I just love doing it. And one of the best topics in football... Is Lenny Hayes. All right. We'll get there Can't in a wait. few moments' time. Are we giving away the multicultural round Sharon's oh, I didn't pick it up last night, no, so I didn't. just want to have a look at it now. <laughs> Peter <laughs> Dacos has come Hold in to help us with that. So your favourite Peter Dacos memory, the moment that oh, immediately springs to mind, tweet it to us. Hashtag AFL360. We'll play four of them. Uh, and, and how many are we giving away? Yes, we're giving away four of them. Four footies. Yep. Right on. OK, so you're going to actually get us going here. The matinee is dedicated to Dakes. Oh, it is. Give us a Dacos matinee. Oh, what a question. Give us your favourite Peter Dacos moment. I settled on a, a big moment in a grand final. I settled on Peter Dacos' first goal in the 1990 grand final VS. And look at that. Bang. Boundary line. That's tough. You've got to look at the state of the game. I think Essendon had kicked a couple. They got off to a flyer. And then people were worried. What's going on here? And when... Which happens a lot in footy... Someone does something. Now, a lot of things, people did things up the field to get it to Dacos in the pocket. But Dacos grabbed it, went inside, went to the boundary line, and myself and John Anderson today were trying to think of the best two kicks of the footy we had seen, and we settled on two. Mm -hmm. And they were Darren Jarman and Peter Dacos. Yep. No one could make the ball talk. And Dunstall spoke about Jarman in his legend speech, but, and we're talking about Dacos coming on tonight. And we just sat there and we're talking for 10 minutes about Peter Dacos at work. That's how great our life's going sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's just fun, you know. It really puts you in a, in a really good headspace. Yep. What's your favourite? Same final series, different game, the drawn qualifying final. I think this is the quintessential oh, Dacos yep, moment. Yep. Now, this was back in the days where you would hear the goal before you saw the goal, because it wasn't on live TV. I can remember listening to the game in the TAB at the Stamford Hotel. And then the replay was on later that Where's night. Where's the Stanford Hotel? In Roval. And at the tab. Yep, with Dad. You started early. Yep, we were yeah. listening to uh, listening to the footy whilst watching the races. And then you would hear the goal, and then you get home and go, "Now, was what? it as good? Because was on radio, it that good?" Being an exponent of the radio calling, sometimes when you're sitting as a kid or you're not watching, you think, "God, what was that?" They've described it like as the best goal ever. The yep. roar would have been enormous. Yep. And then when you saw it that night, that. That lives in my mind from the first moment that I saw it, and that's my Peter Dacos moment. I hope Twitter, please, Twitter, get on Twitter and tell us, because the more we have to have a look at, the more good memories we get, and 
We'll pick the best four. It is a night for memories. So Lenny Hayes is about to join those ranks. He's top of the agenda tonight. The end of season 2014 will be the end of his playing career. <laughs> Got away with it. <laughs> no really one saw. <laughs> No one saw me put it back. <laughs> the impending retirement of a footballer who's as much loved as he is admired. I asked the club if this could be fairly low-key and <laughs> it didn't really turn out that way, did it? Just want to announce at the end of this season I'll be retiring. Uh, I feel very fortunate to have been able to play, you know, a sport that I love and do it professionally for such a long time. I've had some pretty serious injuries and I feel like the club's always really supported me through those. You know, at times where, it, you know, I did my knee when I was over 30 and obviously had the open heart surgery as well, but the club never mentioned retiring to me or, or finishing up. They always backed me in and I feel, you know, really thankful for that. I think I probably, you know, I cried more when Harv's retired than I, than I did telling the boys that I was finishing up. <laughs> Um, I think that was probably just a sign that I was really comfortable with the decision. Me as a person, as a player, I've always liked to set the example both on the train track and on the field and I just feel that um, I'm probably on the edge of the cliff in terms of my body and, and things like that and I just, just feel that the time's right um, to finish up at the end of the year. So in terms of the decision, I think as a player it's always really hard to say those words. You, you sort of feel like you're not copping out but you know, it's hard to say, but I think I feel really comfortable with it. So half a dozen left to play. And Lenny Hayes is with us on AFL 360. Lenny, congratulations and welcome. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Robbo. Uh, how'd your plans for a low-key day go? <laughs> Yeah, it got blown out of the water pretty early. Uh, I saw a couple of those T-shirts as I walked in. I just sh shook my head at disbelief, really. But um, <laughs> we've always had great support throughout my career. It's been a bit overwhelming, to be honest, with, with some of the messages coming through and a few phone calls and, and even some you know, tweets, I guess, from some players that you play against that you, know, you, you also admire how they go about it. So, yeah, it's been a pretty overwhelming day. Has it given you a pretty clear picture of what you have meant to people, those you've played with, those who have watched and those you've played against? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I never really sort of thought about it. I, I guess I've always sort of gone about it in a certain way and I guess first and foremost, I always want to do it in the respect to my teammates and, you know, if the other stuff sort of comes along with that, then I guess that's all well and good. Um, but, yeah, I guess it's hit home a little bit and... I've always had great support from, from Saints supporters, but I've even had, you know, supporters from other clubs today. And, yeah, as I said before, it's, it's a bit strange to hear that and a bit overwhelming, but certainly appreciated. So you've got half a dozen games left, hopefully. Um, does it give you a chance to smell the roses a little bit through those, those last six games? I think I've actually been doing that, Jared, for probably a bit over 12 months. I think I've spoken to you throughout the year and I'd, I said that I was pretty close to retiring last year. So I guess... As you do get older, you you tend to um, sit back and and have a bit of a look and and just sort of appreciate some of the things that at times can be pretty mundane and a bit boring. But and I think I've I've sort of been doing that the last twelve months. But I'll certainly do that over the next six weeks and um, you know take it all in and hopefully um, get to sing the song a few more times too. You've had some incredible incredible highs, Lenny, and you've had some real low points and suffered an ACL and. I suppose that got everyone pretty scared for you. Was the was the heart operation? I think in in, in two twelve. I remember myself and you went to a cafe in Richmond and, and 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 spoke about that. And I suppose how first of all how confronting that was in your life to be able to play another two football season. What is what after that? What has that meant for you? Oh look, it's been um, it's been great. And as I said today, you know the clubs always really supported me through that. But I I guess I've just taken the philosophy of. Um, you know, in life and football at times, things don't always go your way, but you know, I've always thought I've prepared really well and, and even last year when I was talking about going on this year, I, I sought out the advice of a couple of people that um, you know, hold their opinion really high and they said, look, if you're not prepared to do the work, then I wouldn't put your hand up to go again. So I've sort of always thought that if, if I can do the work and give myself every chance, then you know, I thought I still had some good football and I'm, I'm really glad I did go on last year. So you, you went on and you're playing pretty good football. It's, it's you know, pretty sapping at the moment where St Kilda is. Can you tell us the moment, the day, the time 
when you actually said to your wife, your girlfriend who's on the on the camera now, you know what, Dale, I'm that's it. I'm going I'm going to pull the pin. Yeah, I probably knew uh, probably midway through the season, Robbo. I I probably thought going in that this be my last year and I think I got to the halfway mark and, and said to Tara, my wife, I just said, look, you know, I think this is definitely going to be my last year and um, then, you know, I guess proceeded to tell, you know, my mum and dad and dad was a bit flat. He thought I had a few more in me. but yeah, um, Three more? <laughs> yeah, well, if he had his way, yeah, probably. I think he, he just loves the footy so much and, and loves watching me run around but, yeah, I, I guess I just knew that, um, that it was time and you know, and as I've said today, I've, I've always sort of prided myself on the way I train and the way I was able to play. And there's just been times throughout the year where I've found it pretty difficult to really set that example on the training track. And, and at times on the field, I haven't been able to do what I used to be able to do. And, and I understand that, that that happens over time. It catches up to everyone and just felt like the time was right to end it this year. A lot of people leave home and have to go into state to, to play their football. You left, you left Sydney, you left your, your mum and dad at home. And you moved to Melbourne and played, I don't know, was it 14, 15, 15 years. How difficult or how, how, how blessed was it telling your mum and dad that, it, that it's over? I mean, not, clearly they would have been very proud of what you achieved in, in life. How was that conversation? Um, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was pretty tough, to be honest, because I, I know how much they love watching me play and how, um, how much they love the St Kilda Football Club as well. So, look, I, I think... You know, they've obviously got a fair bit of enjoyment out of, you know, watching my career. And so I think with sort of saying that you are retiring, I, I didn't want them to feel like I was, you know, giving up, so to speak. I just, I needed to tell them that, yeah, this is where I was at. This is what I was thinking. They always were going to back in my decision. Um, but they've also seen the, the, the enjoyment that I've got out of the game as well. So I guess when that sort of finishes up, um, you know, I guess they, they worry about their son a little bit on, on what the future holds, but, you know, they've been fantastic support to me and, and I'm, you know, I'm sure they, they will continue to do that in, in whatever I choose to do. You're going to have plenty of, plenty of copy written about you tomorrow. I've written a piece about you, Lenny, and, I, and I've started it, and it's not about me, but I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of St Kilda fans are with me on this. <clears throat> that, that footage of Archer splitting you in half in your first game is just... Unbelievable footage for a couple of reasons because, and I hope we bring it up here, because Arch is coming at you like a train. The beauty is that you just got snapped in half, but you got up straight away. A lot of people stay down and, and, and people are talking about that now in football. You got up and you were hurt and you buckled over. A doctor come out, two trainers, a runner saying, Lenny, you better come off. But you sucked it up. And I, I reckon St Kilda fans seeing that again right now and people knowing it will say, we learnt very early what Lenny Hayes was made of. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, a lot of people refer to that. and I, I don't know if I was thinking myself that I was being tough. I, tough. I just, you know, I, I didn't want to be embarrassed, I guess, in front, of, <laughs> in front of my home crowd. And I knew a lot of my mates were in the crowd as well. So, um, yeah, he certainly got me a beauty. Like, I, I really don't know what I was thinking, just tiptoeing on the sideline. Yeah, what did you move? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I tend to blame Max Hudson, who was on RT. He didn't give me much support there. He could have held him out. He could have blocked for me. But, um, yeah, just one of those things. And I, I guess I thought after that that, you know, it can't get too much worse than that. You know, he's obviously, you know, a hugely respected guy, but, you know, Arch and, he, you know, he's hard as nails. So I thought after that then, you know, I should be right if I could get up after that. He stepped over the top of you as if he expected <laughs> you to be a corpse. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's how it started. It's been glorious since. Did you ever imagine you would be the subject of merchandise, Lenny, with the T-shirts that have been released today, the I Love Lenny T-shirts? Oh, no, look, I was, I was pretty embarrassed about that. I, I've got to the bottom of it. I found out who's responsible and I'll cop a, I'll Who cop was a it? heat tomorrow. Who uh, was it? Oh, look, I don't want to publicly name and shame, but... <laughs> Um, no, look, it was, it was one of our girls who worked down at the club. Um, but, no, I, I never thought. I mean, when you start out, you just want to play one game and then you want to play 20 or 30 and feel part of the team. So I'd, I'd never thought that I'd be able to play professionally for 16 years and have such a good time doing it. Mm, it's been great to watch and there's still a little bit left. Good luck with it, Lenny, and well done. Well done, Lenny. Thanks for having me, guys. Cheers. Lenny yeah. Hayes with us on AFL 360. So hey, he's in a peculiar bunch, or a, a small bunch. And I know this is a cliche, but he's universally loved in AFL terms. Yes. I, I can't think of, 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 a, of a bad word to say about him. Certainly not the way he played the game. He wasn't a dirty player. He got a couple of times, but that was probably just more 
he's earnest in his approach to the ball than actually hitting people. And he, he just gave everything. You know what the best thing you can say? You wish he played for your team. Yes, he had a wicked balk. I saw that. Remember I said he should have won the should have yeah. won the goal of the year that yeah. year. And then I, I picture him in the 2010 grand final. He laid the first tackle after half time when you weren't quite sure yeah. what was going to happen. And he, he, he laid that tackle. I remember broadcasting at the time and thinking, oh, right, this is on. This is really on. And it ended up being a draw. He kicked the, <clears throat> he kicked the goal that he had no right to kick in the last quarter. From 50, too far out. Too far out. First 50 metre goal he kicked in his career. Yeah. I, I, sorry. Well, I shouldn't apologise. Two oh nine grand final, first quarter. Hayes was just awesome, and I thought to myself, I'd love to ring Bomber. I wish Bomber was on the night to talk about the thinking of sending Jimmy Bartell. So you got to actually put a champ on a champ to stop him, and I just thought that match up after that was just so significant to the to the result of the game. And I can still remember just seeing Bartell and Hayes going at the ball. It was just one of the match ups in in a, in, a, in the grand final of you know modern times. So coaching awaits for Lenny Hayes, that's for sure. And uh, Paul Ruse was speaking today, and quite rightly, it was bowled up to him. Why wouldn't you? So there's two in the uh, in the offing now: Lenny Hayes and Cameron Ling, who are starting to occupy many a mind. I think Cam and someone will definitely have a chat too, um, but. It, you know, he's one year or two years, depending on what I do too soon to be an AFL senior coach. Um, I don't know enough of Cameron to, to know yes or no, but I think Cameron, you know, probably Lenny would be someone you'd love to talk to, but is it too soon? Look, Ling and, and Hayes are both outstanding players and from, from what I know, you know, could possibly make good coaches, but, but you've also got to make the decision you want to be a senior coach before uh, and you've got to do some sort of apprenticeship. What makes good coaches? This is the problem. People say, I want to go into coaching, but what makes good coaches? How do you know are they going to, to be able to get their thoughts across? Mm. Hayes and Ling have got... Well, certainly Hayes. I'm not about Ling at the moment, but Hayes has certainly got something because he can coach by, 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 by the way he played. He might, you know, he, you've got to be a really good communicator, but Lenny's, when, you, when Lenny's talking to, something, to somebody, you know what you do? You trust him. Because I, you trust the way he played. There's no, there's no fakeness. There's no, there's no spin in Lenny Hayes. It's, it is, this is it. This is the way it's done. This is the way it's got to be done. And you go, yep, yep, like you're doing now. Yep, yep. I, I agree with that. He's going to be well and truly highly sought after. Yes, Lenny absolutely, Hayes. he will. All right, the current day coaches. Uh, Eleven of the eighteen gathered at the new chief executive Gil McLaughlin's house last night for dinner to open a conversation that.